pray with me. Oh, good and gracious God, we come to you today. This moment of celebration, the emptiness, the emptiness of the tomb that shows us the glory of God. Oh, God, I humbly ask that as we reflect on that day, that emptiness may show a hope that never dies. This way, I hope this reading reflects some of that hope. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. First Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 11. Now let us attend to God's wisdom. Now I remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received and in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved. If you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed unto you as of first importance what I in turn have received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with scriptures. And he appeared to Cephas, and then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than five hundred brothers and sisters at one time. Most of them are still alive, although some have died. Then he appeared to James, and then to all the apostles. Last of all, as one untimely born, he appeared to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. By the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them. Through it, I, I was not I, but the grace of God that is within me. Whether then it is, was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. The Son is this reading of this holy word. May it be good news to us. Our gospel reading today comes from Mark 16, verses 1 through 8. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, this is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. 
And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Christ is risen? This is not really the Easter story we want to hear. I preach from the Revised Common Lectionary, and so that means that once every three years or so, a certain text is going to come up. And so once every three years, this text is the one that is assigned for Easter Sunday. And I have to think about if I want to preach from this text, because when it comes to Scripture and telling the Easter story, this one seems rather weak. It ends with this seeming cliffhanger on a day when we're not really wanting a cliffhanger. We tell people Christ is alive and risen from the dead, and this passage doesn't even show us a risen Savior. We don't get to, to the joy in the friends of Jesus when they discover this man they saw that was executed by the state is now alive and well. But instead, we get this stranger, this person, who tells the women that the tomb, at the tomb, that Jesus isn't here. He's been raised, and he's gone on ahead of them. Oh, yeah, and he tell, this man tells them to tell Peter and the other disciples the good news that they will find him in Galilee. And so what was the response of the women who had, had come there? They ran away in terror and amazement. And they were afraid to say anything. This is not exactly a stirring Easter proclamation. But it's a very human reaction to something that seems so incredibly unreal, so ridiculous and unbelievable. Maybe that this is the reaction you get when you are in face with something that just doesn't make any sense, that someone who we people thought was dead, is now alive. Maybe in an age where we find it hard to believe anything that we cannot see with our own two eyes, that we have even trouble believing that this all might even make sense. We live at an age where we don't know anymore how to imagine the unimaginable. There are lots of reasons why this is, and the problem is here. We have a hard time even understanding stories that we may have heard for a long time because they just don't make sense in our material age. There was a meme that was going around this week that um, a pastor had said that Jesus didn't die to atone sin, but was put to death because of the empire. Now, the writer of this meme, my thought to this was mind-blowing, but I felt it lacked imagination because maybe both sentiments can be true. Maybe our sin isn't just a private matter. Maybe sin also has a social dimension. But it was hard I think for some people to understand that, it had to be either one or the other, A or B, black or white. The story in Mark makes sense in some ways to us today because it's hard to believe that there could be another ending. It's hard for us to believe that Jesus could be alive. He was just another agitator put to death by the state. They were a dime a dozen. They were taken out regularly. Why would Jesus be any different? The women would remain silent, just in some ways like so many of us sometimes today are silent, especially when a conversation moves towards an unpleasant or uncomfortable topic like politics, where maybe a few years ago we could talk a little bit more about our political differences, but now, no one wants to get into a fight, and so we 
don't want to really get into a, a, a fight with our uncle or our sister, so we just keep silent. And the women remain silent because, frankly, it probably was dangerous to say anything different. The ending of Mark is human, and it makes sense because we live in a time when we don't expect that God will act. God is a nice thing to have. God is a good feeling. But the ending of Mark is not just a human ending. It's also one where God is present, even when we don't see God. We don't see Jesus at all in this scene. All we see is the effect of Jesus not being there. But this person, who many of us regard as an angel, tells us that he is risen. He tells us that he goes ahead of the women and the disciples and that he will be found. And the angel tells them to trust that Jesus is alive. There's no proof available except the empty tomb. There is no body. The women ran away in fright, and, you know, that makes sense. But they were also amazed. This was something that was too good to be true. But it was true. The empty tomb scared them, of course, but it was also a sense of wonder and maybe a sense, a sense of hope. Because if what the angel said was true, then this was truly the greatest news ever. It meant that not even death could keep Jesus down. And that is the message of this passage. Hope. Hope that death doesn't have the last say. Hope that Jesus is going ahead, grounded in the belief that just as Jesus is resurrected from the dead, we will at some future day also be resurrected. And this is something that personally I believe now more than ever. It is our hope that God, the relationship that we have between God is now healed. The powers that oppress us will not be in power forever. And this is the message that we need to hear now. To bring this back to earth for a moment, I have been, especially from this pulpit, bemoaning this year since the year began because of the, especially our presidential election. And the one thing that I've noticed from both campaigns is that I don't hear about hope, which is funny because many of our past presidential campaigns, regardless of party, talked a lot about hope. But what I hear now is a lot of fear. The world that we live in today, not just here in the United States, but around the world, is incredibly short on hope. But the Easter message that Christ is not in the tomb, that Christ has been raised, reminds us that even in a world that doesn't have a lot of hope, there is hope in the risen Christ. The, this Easter message in Mark may not show us a risen Christ, but as Rob had read in Corinthians, the risen Christ is there. The message has been spread that Christ is alive, and the risen Christ goes ahead of us to show up in our world today. Our message is to do what was called by the women and, and who were later by others who told it, told it, is to tell the world that Christ is risen, that he is not in the tomb, that he is alive. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thank <laughs> you.